Explanations, please. Okay, this is inside a hand basket in the burlesque theater. And this is about a woman who has no legs who becomes the best dancer in the world. And what happens is she decides to leave the extravaganza, which is a performance uh, where people just kind of get naked for the sake of getting naked. And she decides to go to the burlesque theater, um, which people feel that if you watch, you uh, have better morals. You can learn something from watching that. So she could have stayed in the extravaganza, but she goes to the burlesque theater, and that's what helps her to uh, become the best dancer in the world, even though she doesn't have any legs. Inside a hand basket in the burlesque theater. As you may already be aware, the burlesque theater is upon us, and the granite encased monoliths of your muscular legs, drilled to the sides of the stage, are as tall as you are tall between them. She go. They are your legs, after all, and Victorian women know it, and advanced syphilis knows it, and the shining temples of the man rubbed pistachios on his suspenders. No, it's impossible to avoid the thought of steam beer and a cast iron stove to read by whenever they're easily distracted. Oh, no. You have never been more happier to be more astonished that those are your legs. And those are people, too, who know your legs. More than two people of Moorish personages people through twin Moroccan peepholes. Those are your legs. And all it took was a little foresight to realize you couldn't stay in an extravaganza forever. Her performers only act as if they're acting. They only think to use French obstetrical atlases for all kinds of padding. And they only use their hands and eyes to convey the limits of one scope at arm's length. But you, in your hand basket, use your hands and eyes as if you were signaling in the great conversion from stage lights to sun to lizard skin, able to keep what it needs for its path, to independently use all of itself, until the crowd feels this potential of crests and spines as their own, even in the dark. You, who are flanked by your old legs, that all agree are the only lines you'll ever need, scream about marble statues, and how they can never come to life, because they'll never enjoy it, unless they can have it both ways. And your song is butchery, embroidered in aurora bands of sequestered dusk for this night only and tomorrow too. But the big difference is there is a purpose, threefold, peculiar, salient, the mesmeric pull of leg and leg and basket, demanding all, seducing all, until all comes together in grand separateness. And no pantomime had to translate how it felt the first time you didn't feel alone outside yourself, perfect and imperfect. The crowd clapping singly with the drollest hearts and limbs of wind. 